It's exactly five minutes after seven. What you just saw, AM Business. Uh, AM Business comes your way every midweek here on our show. Uh, but now let's change gears and let's talk about something that's been trending pretty much from yesterday. There's a planned demonstration that's underway. We're told that people are beginning to gather at the Obras spot. But we also know that the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Kokwa Nyiroho, spent the night at the BNI headquarters. He's been officially charged for treason. I've got the national organizer of the party, Kofi Adams, joining me here live. Uh, in a bit, we will go to the Obras Sport. Roland Walker will be on standby. He will tell us exactly what is happening. But good morning to you, sir. Thank you for making it. Good morning. Yeah, Mama, today is the I, day. I prefer to call Mama instead of add a V. I mean, <laughs> add gun. <laughs> sure, that's fine. But this is the day that you are mourning our sovereignty, we're told. That's exactly so. And that's why you'll find me in, in a black uh, pant and then the red top because it's money. That is what this government have decided to do to us. Mm. Having had our forefathers fight for our independence, struggle, shed their blood, and you could find it in our anthem and in other patriotic songs that were developed later. The government have just decided that they have packaged our country and sold for free. Let's talk about Koko for a while. Uh, how is he doing? Uh, this morning I spoke with the lawyer and he told me he was going to inquire to see whether they will take him to court today because per our laws and the constitution, the agency that is keeping him have a right to detain him for a maximum 48 hours, beyond which they must present him to court and tell the court the facts for which reason they are charging him, and if they feel like they are still investigating, request for extension of their detention. Otherwise, the court will be compelled to grant him bail. Mm. So this money is going to find out if they will take him to court today then we would know the court and would be there to solidarize with our fellow. If they are not taking him to court, we will continue to have our engagements and, and make sure that at least he is very well uh, treated and attended to wherever he is. We know that he is with BNI, but whether the headquarters or the region currently, I have not asked for that information. Mm. But the party is not taking this likely. Yesterday we saw supporters besiege the police headquarters, uh, but the party is not happy. And I wonder why, because we've seen this happen before, haven't we? Yeah, the fact that we've seen it happen before doesn't mean that we should be happy about it. That is the, even the more reason why we must not be happy. We didn't, the, we didn't hear that, you that, um, that, disagree or show you see, displeasure. You see, uh, um, when it happened to Canada, Japan, was see, it because you were in government see, then? No. I'll tell you the reason why we are so, so unhappy is because it has even happened before. That is the reason why we are even so unhappy that President Nana Adodanko Akufuado is selling Ghana for free because we have gone through this before. Our forefathers were deceived. So they were justified then because they were deceived either with the Bible or with the Quran, or with gifts, or trade relationship, or the idea of protecting them, they ended up colonizing them. And now those things they were trading with, they were forcing now and taking it forcefully for free, including slavery. Then we fought and gained independence. You don't repeat the mistakes of the past. It happened in the past. An MP declared war. He said, I have declared war. And that Airways and guns who find themselves in some part of the country, people should start beating them. People should start clubbing them to death and so on and so forth. It was, we were all not happy. Well, that was the first time we were hearing such things. He was arrested, taken to the uh, BNI, investigated, and charged for treason. What happened? The court said, no, you can't prove such, you can't prove intent. You can't do all those things. So they let him go. Today, that person qualified to pick forms, filled those forms, submitted to the Electoral Commission, and has been elected to Parliament and sworn in. 
So you don't repeat the mistake that free speech, a speech that is even less, he has not declared war. Koku didn't declare war. All he said was a civil, he said, a civil coup d'etat. You agree with the comments he made? I may not agree with the comment, but I understand him. Maybe I would have said it differently. That is why he qualified the coup d'etat. He did not just say coup d'etat. But, I but know, he, he made I know, reference to I know, he made I know. reference to a certain chapter that nobody wants to revisit. You see, the, seven, clear. the 72 issue that people say he made reference to. It's was not people civil, say, but he did make no, reference was he a to civil it. Coup? It was a military coup. What happened then was a coup d'etat, military, not civil. That's why he qualified it, because he understood himself what he meant. But if, but I, know, I, know, if I know what I know, happened to your father, I know, I know, uh, 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 no. Kovi Adams, and I say that what happened to your father would happen no, to you. He didn't say that it would happen to him. He was only drawing his attention to advice. Look, if I know that something happened to your mom or your dad, and I see you following a certain trajectory, I have a responsibility to advise you. What was Koku trying to say then is that governments that usually get formed through the ballot end up deceiving themselves with the popularity at the time of elections. And so even as they misbehave, they tend to think that I was voted with this percentage and so I am so popular. They have forgotten that. 10th March 2018 is not the same as 7th December 2016. Many people would have changed their minds. Drivers, teachers, nurses, workers, Ghanaians, security persons who may have queued to vote for you, they may have all been let down. And so as you take your decisions, factor the concerns of all these other persons who may not be in parliament. There are some of your MPs who are in parliament with a vote difference of 9, 10, 100, 150. Today, many more persons have left your party to join other parties. So if elections were held today, you may not have the majority that you have. So don't just rely on it and take decisions and think that I have decided. One day the thing enters parliament, the next day it is passed. Don't do that. Listen to the concerns of the people. So, Mr. President, the agreement has been passed by your MPs in Parliament. But still look into it because this is what the people are saying. It was a very strategic advice. So, maybe, I, I, maybe I, I, I take it that the, the NDC is comfortable you see, you with, see, with what Koku it's said. Not about, it's not about. You see, when, it, when someone speaks, I'm not saying Koku is a child. When your child speaks and there is misunderstanding, from the other side, you would first and foremost have to attempt to solidarize with that other side and explain. I am sure you people in the media, you always are looking for something you call, uh, uh, there's a term you use, that sound, sound bites. Immediately you get that, even if the person has not, because you go there for a particular soundbite. Once you get it, oh, we thank you so much. Especially when the person is on phone, bam, he's, he's gone. I am sure if Koku had more time. Oh, Koku certainly, it sounded like he had a lot of time. No, he didn't because, have. Because he if, didn't, if you monitor, the presenter no. was even trying to draw his attention didn't to have, the fact that he didn't have, the I comments have that he, to, he, he was have, making I have listened, were a bit... I have listened to the tape. I realized that when he talked about the what happened will happen a civil coup as he continue speaking you you will get a better understanding about what he meant that it will going to be through of course a democratic process whether by acting his excellency the president that you have failed us so much so there are options of resigning in our constitution a president can resign so so now Finish. so now the defense is that Koku perhaps didn't get enough time to explain himself properly. I'm not putting up a defense for, for him that he didn't get enough time to explain himself properly. What I'm saying is that people have said Westerns. Okay. One, and uh, that they took them through the same process. Two, they, they charged them for treason, took them to court. The court said, get off with 
this kind of study. So you don't repeat, we, you don't repeat. They are exactly playing the same tape. We'll, we'll come back to this conversation, but I want us to just go to the grounds, the brass port, and find out exactly what's happening. My colleague Roland Walker is on standby at the brass port. He will tell us uh, how it looks like. What's the picture that, there on the ground, Roland? Well, thank you, Mama Vio Sabwaji. I'm here with, of course, um, our great colleague. It's really a go in. What, what did you first see when you came here? We've seen um, lots of police officers you know, on the ground. Um, just one them that is currently you know ongoing um, but they've opened the space for them and majority of the demonstrators are actually inside now when you come inside there's a big trailer with you know a lot of sound systems and it's expected that for those who will be tired um, when the demonstration has started Well, we have to apologize. Technology uh, is uh, not so good a friend right now, but we're going to work on that. We're, uh, as soon as we have a stable connection, we will link up with our colleagues, Max Wolagbaba and Roland Walker at the Obras Port. That's where you're headed after this. Sure. Uh, so really, is this demonstration simply because we signed a certain agreement with the U.S.? That's exactly what it is about. Note that we are against the United States of America. No, we cherish our relationship with them. We respect the relationship we've had with them. We respect the engagements we've had with them. But we will not allow and accept any foreign forces based in our country. This is it something is that we've seen before. No, we, we haven't, haven't even we, we haven't, haven't even seen an appear in Parliament seen, before. Are you seen, disputing you that we had we had we signed agreement back in 1998, Mama, Mama 2015? Mama I've seen those not, agreements not myself. Not at all. Not at all. We are not. Not at all. One. Let me tell you. Maybe I want to start from the end and take you back to 98 and then 2015 agreement until the recent Supreme Court ruling. Note the bar used to be or agreements could be signed between one government and another without necessarily putting it before parliament. But once the Supreme Court has made a pronouncement, you have no other alternative. And so every government, whether it is a PNC government, a APC government, CPP government, the MPP government, NDC government, if you want to have any agreement of that nature, with another sovereign state, you would have to lay it before parliament. You no longer can use diplomatic notes as a means of accepting such agreement. The 98 agreement was an agreement more of a collaboration between Ghana and U.S. in dealing with many myriad of issues. They did not have to establish any base for permanency. It didn't happen. I that thought way. that that had been corrected so many times that it's not a base. Which is not a base. You don't even know the numbers if you look at the agreement. You see, it is based on what the uh, uh, defense minister is telling you, not what is in the agreement. But the agreement, you see, when you pick the Kenyan agreement that they had with the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, you don't need anybody to come and talk to you again. You read it and you understand what it is. How many, the movement, how they will come, control of areas, offenses, and how they will be dealt with. When you pick ours, it is what Niti will comes to tell you that you have to take. This is, but, this but, is, but, but, let me but hang on, what we have let now, me, isn't just, it better in terms of the fact it that is because never, it went to parliament, no, now we're you, all privy you see, to you see, what is in the court, what, uh, what is what in the agreement? Are you saying that? Are you saying that? You know, you know without, what you are, you because know what you are the, telling these me. terms Mama have me. pretty much been the same. Mama, but they are not the same. But you're saying that for the fact that we didn't know about it, it was it was okay. Is that what you're saying? They are not the same. The fact that you didn't know about it was not unlawful. Because at that but time... But then the terms were okay please, for you. Please, The terms were okay. They were okay because if you took the 2015 incident or agreement, the 2015 agreement was between Ghana and the United States of America to use Ghana as a logistics base 
for an operation in Nigeria. Nigeria was going to go through an election. Nigeria was suffering under Boko Haram and America was coming in to help. They needed a place to use for their logistics to deal with the situation in Nigeria. That arrangement has come to an end. What we are having today is forever. We your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren will have no right of exiting. And on unless, that note, Unless the Americans are the ones who decide that we want to exit. This is an uh, agreement I, that I allows quickly... a corporal to come in with an ID card when our president will have to go to America with a visa and a passport. Let's link that... up with Roland Walker. He's on standby. We'll continue definitely with this conversation uh, from the Obra uh, spot. Roland? Well, thank you, Mamavi. Uh, sorry that we had some loss of feed in the first transmission. But Maxwell, um, what should we be expecting here? Because already we can see that we need to go give the viewers what the picture really is. Mm. What initially did you see when you when you came here? Well, we've seen a um, lot of police, you know, officers here, officers, police officers from the formed police units of the Ghana Police Service. Um, they are actually outside. They've lined up the streets of uh, uh, right in front of a brass spot here. Line up the streets. All of them uh, uh, um, in protective gear. Um, a lot of them also um, holding the, the gun. Some of them sitting on um, police armored vehicles, you know, um, uh, parked here right in front. If you come inside also, um, we've seen quite a number, you know, of police officers. Just some minutes ago, we had a director of operations, uh, a DCO for you actually addressing them. Some of the demonstrators are also in here, all of them um, holding their placards already. Now, what is happening is that when they get in here, they pick their placards and then they start. All right. So let's give you a sick preview of what we should be expecting. And currently, if you see this is the converging center or the point, this used to house the Obra Sport. Now we have this monument here. We know that it was built as part of uh, the whole structure of the edifice that is the interchange here. You could see the placards reading, for example, this one has been reading, our future is at stake, Mr. President, uh, cheap shithole government. Why would you betray Ghana for money? And um, we'll try as much as possible uh, to also speak to officials of the NDC who have made a presence fail. And uh, you can see that the crowd are just trickling in and their small numbers consistently. We're hoping that we can have the the rank and file, the top leadership of the party to have um, a certain progress toward what they have. Now, first, before we speak to the leadership and the top officials, let's speak to the convener of this event. The convener is Adam Magbana, uh, used to be a former SRC president of the University of Ghana, and um, now he's a convener. And you convened this event. Tell us what the rationale uh, was or is about. Well, uh, the rationale for this particular gathering is for us to gather Ghanaians who are concerned about their security and who deeply are convinced that the president and the entire government did not act in the best interest of Ghana with regards to the U.S.-Ghana military agreement that was recently ratified by parliament. And consistently, uh, it's been a message that has been shared on social media for which you've been able to rally uh, mainly pro-NDC leaders here. Do you have other leaders or other personalities or groupings that are just going beyond the NDC? Contrary to your assertion that uh, most of the leaders here are mainly pro-NDC, I think that I have identified members and leaders of many other political parties. In fact, we wrote a letter and we invited all the political parties, including the new patriotic party. Most of the parties have responded uh, positively, and that is why we see them here. Probably it's because the NDC have been in government before. You see some previous government officials, so they are the notable faces. But I can tell you that there are many Ghanaians here from all walks of life, people who do not belong to the NDC, who belong to different political parties. In fact, people who are here who don't even care which political party is ruling, but who are concerned about their security. So I think that Ghanaians are here in their numbers, and we believe before the protests end, we will be able to gather the number that... You have agreed with the Ghana Police Service officials to make sure that security
it is maintained and you have agreed on certain routes, what really are the routes for today's match? Well, uh, from here at Obra Sport, we'll be going to the Kwame Kuma Avenue, through to uh, the Farisco traffic light, then to Ioko, and we'll end at the Hearts Park, where we'll have some, a mini rally of a sort for the notable, uh, some notable personalities to address us on this particular agreement. What's the name of your group again? Ghana First Patriotic Front. Ghana First Patriotic Front. Yes. Do you have another group with the name Progressive in there? Uh, no, we, 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 since we announced the demonstration, we got lots of groups interested in joining and they wrote to us, some called us that they wanted to be a part. So all of us gathered here, we can say that we are progressive forces and, and, and all of that. But well, thank you very much. Uh, Adam Agbana is with the Ghana First Patriotic Movement and they are starting all this initiative. You can see the leaders of the NDC. Now let's give you a preview of what really is happening. You get to find that we are, we are getting a mass up trickling in of those who will be part of the demonstrations in the first place more so we have um, media personnel also present you can have the demonstrators with various placards this one Baumia is a liar 2020 we go show Nana and then we have a couple of uh, other placards that do not conform with the regular ones for example there's one the Ghana US military base deal passed not in my name and you have one Dr. Um, Corbyn Bensam he is um, a social commentator, a lecturer of finance, marketing, political marketing, finance with the University of Ghana Business School, an ardent follower uh, of myself. I follow him as, as well, commentator on social media. Good morning to you. Why do you decide to solidarize with today's movement, so to speak? Good morning to you, Dr. Kobe Menz. Good morning, Roland. I think that uh, the issue at stake is very serious. Uh, it doesn't matter who is actually organizing it. I think that it is good for us to tell the American Congress that we are not interested in the deal that their government sent to Ghana and therefore they must revisit the deal. And that is the reason why I'm making my voice head or my voice head. So. All right. So the, the intent is you want to make sure that the clarion call is there consistently making sure the message is there that the the deal is not a good one. Definitely not. Now, um, apart from you from academia, do you have a, any other of, of, of your kind who also share in your ideals and your beliefs? Well, I think the cross-section of Ghanaians have actually sounded their disapproval. A lot of people have actually said that they don't agree with the, the deal that was given us. We're not saying that we don't agree with cooperation with countries, but the agreement is a very bad one. It's in a very bad taste. And I think that a cross-section of Ghanaians have made their voices heard. And I believe the Congress, American Congress, American public must be told that the people of Ghana is being pushed by their government to accept a deal that a lot of people don't agree with. So they must actually reconsider it. And that is Dr. Kobe Mensah with the investor of Ghana Business School. He's a lecturer, he's a great social commentator. But you can just read this comment. Build Factory is not a military base, so to speak. But we know that um, according to the convener of this great protest and movement, it's not only uh, a pro-NDC movement, but also people who think socially alike. I, I have... Um, the ranking member on the Foreign Affairs Committee for the minority in Parliament, but also um, the member of Parliament for the um, North, North. North Town constituency and uh, former Deputy Minister of Education, Samuel Okujetua Blackwa. Good morning to you, sir. Hi, good morning. Good to see you. And uh, you decided to be part of this uh, whole protest match. Um, it, it's not an NDC thing, is it? Yeah, absolutely. I'm uh, glad to be here. And uh, uh, this is uh, a platform uh, put together by the Ghana First Patriotic Front. As you do know, uh, they wrote to us in the minority that they would want us to uh, solidarize with them. We met, we discussed it. We looked at um, the leaders of the group and what their objectives are. And we said that it's very much in line with uh, what uh, we stand for. We have been uh, protesting against uh, this agreement in Parliament. Uh, we did all, all we could do in our power to block it. Unfortunately, we didn't have the numbers. Uh, our colleagues on the other side, on the majority side, uh, remain belligerent and uh, very adamant and nonchalant. They uh, were uh, hell-bent on railroading the agreement, rushing it through uh, Parliament and uh, what we consider to be an abuse of majority. And so, uh, having worked out of Parliament, we served notice that that would not be the only 
action we will engage in. That will not be the last time the people of Ghana will hear from us in protesting against this agreement. So this is one of the options that we have uh, uh, decided to uh, embark on to join this demonstration. It's a first step. We are considering other options, including uh, legal suits, uh, getting the Supreme Court uh, to render that agreement null and void, because we hold strongly that the agreement before it came to Parliament ought to be executed in line with Article 75.2. It was not executed, and so Parliament engaged in an unconstitutionality. We are very clear in our minds about that, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait and hear what the eminent and uh, venerable uh, Supreme Court judges will say. Um, we are also considering other uh, manifestations, including public fora, uh, lectures, and uh, picketing, all we can do democratically and constitutionally within the remit of the law to put pressure on government, on President Akufuado, to take Ghana out of this agreement, which is not in our interest. We also want the United States of America, our good friends, to see us and to see that um, we don't want a permanent military base in our country. We don't want a permanent military presence. We don't want an agreement signed in perpetuity as Article 19 of the agreement uh, clearly stipulates so that they can also advise uh, themselves and, 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 and pull out of Ghana. Ghana should not be one of the countries they should be considering for this kind of agreement. Better still, this whole agreement can be reviewed and, and renegotiated so that we can have a win-win situation, which will be in the mutual uh, beneficial interest of both countries. But, but as things stand now, is the agreement is very lopsided and is very uh, much against the national interest of Ghana is against the sovereignty, is against our dignity, and it is an affront uh, to our people. And that is why we are here protesting, joining uh, the Ghana First Patriotic Front and all other civil society organizations joining us today, including other political parties who also declared their solidarity with this much. Which are the other political parties joining you here, uh, if, if you have any note of them? Yes, I, I, I do know that the, the People's National Convention, uh, the chairman Bernard Mona spoke to the press yesterday and said that they will be joining us. I have heard uh, uh, Hassan Ayariga also indicate that they will join us. I have, I have also, I have, I, I have also heard, I have also heard that uh, there are some elements of the CPP who will also be joining us today. So uh, this is this is a broad-based platform, and and we are and we are glad that uh, we have we have a, a broad platform and that we are doing this in a non-partisan way, thinking about our country, Ghana first. President Trump has been talking about. America first. I was at the UN General Assembly when he addressed his colleagues and he said that as for him, he's for America first. And he encourages all other national leaders to, to put their country first. So it is important that we also put our country first. President Akufado should also put Ghana first in this matter. Well, thank you very much. And uh, we've had the North Tom Member of Parliament, Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa, who is also a member, a ranking of the Foreign Affairs Committee. And uh, the crowd have been massing up so you can feel the presence of the crowd. And um, consistently they've been vociferous. The numbers keep trickling in, even though we don't have the numbers as it is. And uh, we'll be speaking to them very soon. Now, now that, that, that's all right, that's all right, that's all right. Uh, here with me, and uh, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. How are you? Okay. So can I? Can I? Kluche Averji is joining us. Uh, good morning to you. You're clad in red, the appropriate colors that uh, the, the whole movement is about for today, as convened by the convener, uh, Adam Agbana. Now, um, I just had a chance of, of, of the NDC and, and your, pol your political party songs. Uh, 
basically looks more NDC than anything, wouldn't you say? Well, NDC is a big party. There's a chunk of Ghanaians living in Accra. So if you see majority of people here as NDC members, that tells you how strong the party is. But you are a member of parliament. Yes. You're not only a member of parliament, you're a very experienced member of parliament. Yes. An agreement that has been passed by the parliament of the Republic of Ghana um, holds. Why are all these? Well, the agreement had to be passed by one side of parliament, not under uh, a unanimous decision. This is the agreement which the minority of parliament worked out. We expressed our views. We told the speaker that we cannot be part of something that we think uh, is not legal. First of all, the agreement was not executed because Article 75 of the Constitution, 75.2 of the Constitution, that says that the president shall execute or cause to be executed an agreement that will be ratified by parliament. Now, this agreement was not signed, which means that the agreement was not executed. So we cannot be part of an illegality which from the Constitution. Constitution. So what are we actually even ratifying if there is no agreement at all? That is number one. Number two, the agreement came that Parliament cannot make any amendment to the provisions of that agreement, which means that those provisions that we think are not in the best interest of Ghana, we cannot make any change. So are we to rubber stamp that agreement? We don't want to be part of the process where we will be rubber stamping something though we, we think that as the people's representatives, it is not in the best interest of our people, we should go and rubber stamp it. Now, based on these two reasons, we told Mr. Speaker that we cannot be part of that process and we walk out. So yes, the agreement has been passed by parliament, but try, try to qualify it that it was passed by only one side of the house. That is binding on you or not, whether you walked out? It is binding on the people of Ghana, including me, and that is why this demonstration is drawing down to the president that the agreement that was passed by his party in parliament is something that is not in the best interest of this country. If you look at it again, bring it back to parliament, Parliament should be given the power to amend those provisions that we think are not in the best interest of this country. That will support it. Because we know that military cooperation exists between Ghana and the U.S. So we cannot say that will not continue. But the new agreement is not in the best interest of this country. And that is the reason why we don't want to be part of it. So yes, the agreement should be brought back to Parliament. Parliament should be allowed to amend those provisions that will, will be in the best interest of this country that we all support it. But as it is now, we want to tell the president that it is not good for us as a country. And we want to tell all Ghanaians that if they don't rise up to tell the president that what he has done is not in the interest of this country, then when the effect of this agreement start to have repercussion on the people of this country, we in minority, NDC should not be blamed, but the MPP... What are the, the effects? Majority. There will be no effect. There will, there will be no military base to be established or built in Ghana. Uh, th that's, that, that's, that's a consistent of, refrain we one, keep one hearing the, from one, government. One of the effects is that the U.S. Army and their contractors can enter this country without visa. That is one. They can enter this country without visa, and visa also bring in revenue to us. That is one. Another one is that all the equipment that they are bringing are tax free. Once they are tax free, we are also losing revenue. Another effect is that they can have access to our installations. Installations that are in the, to protect the security of this country, the U.S. military can have access to it. When they have access to these installations, what are they coming to do that we should not even have protection to decide whether we should, be, we should monitor them or not. All this can have effect on us as Ghanaians. And these military men, the U.S. military men, will come to this country. They walk free around. They mingle with us. We don't know what they'll be doing. There are certain things that people are even thinking that this is a way that this country 
is allowing uh, 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 same sex, gradually bringing same sex into this country. You know, U.S. has endorsed same sex. Well, that, but, but, but that's go, go going above the board and trivializing and, tri the and trivializing the it's issues. A process, it's a process of indoctrinating. All right, opinions. but but but, but before I let you go, though, I know I, I know what the, the refrain and the consistent position of you and um, your, the members of your party as well as this movement is the the deputy general secretary of your party, uh, Koku Anyidoho, is um, just behind the BNI cells. Mm. Uh, we know he's been charged for treason. Uh, yeah. Our correspondent consistently have been on the beat. But what's your position on his arrest? What he said in the first place and subsequently his arrest and detention? For what he said has been described by them as a treason. What do you think it is? Well, it is for the court to decide that. I don't think what he said is treasonable. Go to the constitution, read what constitutes a treasonable act. The, look at it and, and see what Koku said is something that is reasonable. So first of all, what he said is challengeable in court. Now, allow or grant him bail, get him his lawyers, send him to court, let him go and defend his, himself in court. Why are you detaining him? Why you don't want to allow him to be bailed? So my concern is that whether it's reasonable act or what, allow him to defend himself in court. Because there is no case now in Ghana that are not Bailable. That's it. Mm. So, well, we wish all the best for today's uh, match. And uh, that's you, Member of Parliament for Ketu North, James Kluche Avergi. But there are a number of scenes taking place here. You can find media present and uh, consistently we've had uh, media personnel coming to make sure that they undertake their work just like all of us. Uh, you can see a number of them as well. The police are still on high alert. But let's just quickly take you before we go to the studio to whether the police have, have masked up since morning. They've been addressed by... Um, the chief superintendent himself of um, police operations and um, Chrissy Fori has been here. Uh, we had had earlier interactions with him and you can find him here as well. But, but go good morning to you, sir. If I could just have a short uh, interview with you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And um, how many men have you assembled here for today's movement or, or march? Well, we have required number to pull this demonstration to a successful conclusion. One thing is the police will remain professional, will be up to tax, and make sure we shepherd them peacefully. And we also request that all the demonstrators also will be law abiding so that together we can have a peaceful protest march that ends at the old Accra House of Folk Park. I don't know what words to use, whether your presence here and the accoutrement you have uh, is novel or is just part of your routine. I've seen uh, armored cars, various forms of ammunition here for the small crowd. Is that consistent with police operations? Uh, one thing is all that you've seen around are the normal internationally accepted uh, public order equipment. There is nothing that goes outside this and uh, we we'll use it to protect them, protect the communities that we'll be going through and also protect everybody that comes our way. So it is a normal police apparel. All right, thank you very much, sir. And uh, oh, please, before we go, to, which routes have you agreed with the convenience of, of this protest? Uh, with the leadership of the march. And the, we agree that we're going to set off from Obra Sport through Kwame Nkrumah Circle, the Kwame Nkrumah Avenue. Then we have left at Farisco to the TUC Junction. Then Accra Technical University, Yoko. Then Professor Tamil's Highway, uh, High Street, onto the old House of Hope Park near the Art Center. That is the route. Well, we wish you well for today's operations. Thank you very much. So you can find that when the cameras go there, we have a number of the lined up police personnel. Initially, they had been in, in great form, uh, being addressed by the leadership of the, of the police force here. And many of them are here battle ready and making sure that no holes are bad as far as making sure they keep the peace and ensure that the protesters or the marchers keep to the routes that have been agreed 
um, between them with the Ghana police service as well as the convenience of the protest. But let's just give you a sneak preview again. This is the type of crowd you're seeing. Again, it hasn't started. We're told by the leadership of the conveners of this march or movement that the crowd or the number of people they expect uh, will grow as and when. And uh, once they keep trickling in, we'll bring you a lot more from the ground. Now back to the studio. Hi from the Obra spot. We've also got Maxwell Agbaba. We'll be joining them again. They will be coming from all the angles we've heard from uh, the police. We've heard from people who are protesting. We've heard from members of parliament in studio. I've got the national organizer of the NDC, Kofi Adams, who will be heading towards uh, the venue in a bit. Uh, uh, Kofi, we're told in terms of the numbers, it was supposed to be more than this. You, the, we, we kept hearing, let's gather at 6, and it's 45 minutes after 7. The numbers are not what we were at least expecting from what had been said earlier yesterday. I don't know what numbers you were expecting, but the numbers, we are just about starting. They haven't even moved yet, so I'm sure that by the time the organizers say, Jack, let's move, the numbers will be... Which is, which is what time? About what time? I'm sure usually when they announce an event for six, we expect that maybe in after two hours of the announcement, there should be movement. Because mm. basically in Ghana, we have produced our own time that we call it Ghana made time. Whether it is weddings, the only thing we keep to time is boarding flights. <laughs> that one, you see them running to the, to the airport. All other times, whether weddings, funerals, I've been to some church funeral service where the pastor or the priest have had to start service before even some of the bodies were brought because people won't, won't be there. So late, late the start wedding. is normal? Yeah, so late starts have become part of us. So when usually organizers want to start at 8, they will announce 6 so that those who want to stay for, for some time before coming mm. will come at the start time. Okay. So uh, let's look ahead after this demonstration, then what, particularly for the NDC? Sure, for the NDC, we will continue to register our protests as what has happened. We think that it's wrong. We think that government must look at it. We think that we must not sell ourselves for cheap when we must, based on the experiences of past arrangement, should have been improving. I'm telling you, the 98 arrangement and even the 2015 that was to support Nigeria to be able to do something in Nigeria should have informed our government as to how to do it. The Kenyan situation, other countries have done it. So why not just go pick it and say that one too, should we be suffering this kind of incompetence? Should we be suffering this kind of substandard governance? We want to know the people who were involved in the negotiations whether truly there were military professionals involved. The kind of names I'm hearing, I doubt if they allow those persons to make contribution at these meetings. Otherwise, what was brought to us would not be what. I truly doubt whether even the deputy minister, Major uh, Derrick Odru, retired, the, uh, one of our uh, uh, MPs, himself really contributed to these, these discussions. I truly doubt that the professionals were allowed a hand to, to handle this situation. And the Minister for Defense, I was saying it earlier, I don't believe him and I don't trust him when he speaks. Why do I say so? This was the same minister on the floor of the House when Sam George, the NDC MP for Ningo Pram Pram, spoke on the Ghana card issue that beyond His Excellency the President, no other person has been given a card that not the vice president, not the speaker, who is a number three person. Niti Wool got on his feet and lied to everybody that he had seen the vice president had a functioning card. You remember that incident? The speaker forced the MP for Ningo Pram Pram, the NDC MP for Ningo Pram Pram, to withdraw that statement. What did he say? He said, Mr. Speaker, if you are relying on a lie to ask me to withdraw the truth, I have withdrawn. Only so for a week later, for National Identification Authority to go to Parliament to meet the committee and what the NDC MP said was exactly the truth. So what's the Beyond link? The, the link is that you should not trust such a person when he tells you that there will be no base. When the agreement we, you have before you is not telling you that. You should I'd not like to trust, say thank you for your time. You should not trust him. 
Thank we you appreciate very your much. time. Thank we you. will see you on the ground and sure, we'll I'll be, be following the movement as well. From, from here to uh, Brasport is not far. You're I'm jogging, glad to right? use this medium to invite all other persons who haven't reached there. That let us know this issue is a very important issue. We should not do the normal Ghana time. Let's move in there and start. Don't wait to say that you want to join midway. Let's all start and end together. Thank you for your time. We wish you well with your match. Uh, you. But hopefully you don't veer off the approved routes or we give, the, have never or give the police any cause because as you saw there, they are absolutely prepared. Anytime the police have had to do anything that involves progressive forces, they never suffer. It is when they have to do with the other <laughs> side that they, they are called to do. That's Kofi that Adams, the national organizer of the National Democratic Congress. We thank you for, for your time.